Sarah Bodwe here from Horse Racing Nation, pleased to be joined by our very own Paddock Prince, David Levage, to discuss the upcoming Pick 6 carryover at Belmont Park. Long shot winner in the last race triggered a carryover of over $83,000, and this sequence, you said the turf races seem pretty interesting. It definitely seems approachable, that's for sure. Yeah, no, if you're definitely trying to play on a smaller budget, I think there's definitely some singles that you can play around in. The turf races look pretty interesting. A couple of route races and then a marathon race to um, in race eight that has some good high level allowance horses. So, yeah, I think it's very manageable. I'm saying that now it might be a bunch of long shots, but it does look manageable from um, a betting standpoint. Yeah, I agree completely. And to start things off, I know that we're both taking a uh, fairly skinny approach. I'm singling in this race, and you're only using two in this $25,000 claiming level race for milers. And crypto cash obviously makes a lot of sense, even money on the morning line. What I like about this horse is not only the first off the claim for the Rob Atras barn, which we know how dangerous that angle is, but that he's been in this barn before. So they have a lot more familiarity with this horse. They know how to get him to win. They've won with him already. And Kendrick Carmouche stays aboard, obviously very familiar with this one. Yeah, and I kept trying to look in this race to try to find something else. But this horse is very consistent. He's ran seven times this year, been in the money six times with two wins. And like you said, he's a reclaim, and he's in really good form to boot. I, I tried. There's one other horse in this race that I was going to use on a Peruvian boys coming in second off the bench, first off the claim for Linda Rice. He got claimed for 35, and they ran for 16 last time, and Linda Rice took him. I thought he might. He's got some back races that are pretty good. He might run you know, better second out. I thought he was another horse that, if you want to add somebody outside of the even money favorite, that he has a, he has an okay chance, I think. I don't, I don't know if he has much running left in him, but I think this is a good race to find out. Yeah, that's fair enough. I just saw so many horses that were going in a – slower trending direction than crypto cash who is at least trending in the right direction it's a short price to start i like your one shot against him but i would be pretty surprised if neither of those two horses showed up in this spot yeah and the grumps little tots the three horses first off the claim for charlie baker but he hasn't ran since november they are putting him in for the waiver today and rosario's riding him i don't know how you look at those kind of things but they are protecting him today. He obviously might need one off the long layoff. But when Charlie Baker uses Rosario, they're sometimes live. It's made kind of his main guy. So if you wanted a third horse, I guess, on a backup ticket, Grumps Little Tots would be a good long shot. I don't know what his – I don't have the morning line with me, but he's got to be 6-1 to one plus. Oh, he's 7-2. to two. Is he really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess in a short field with an entry. Yeah, I guess it is a short field. Yeah, he's 7-2, to two, 4 to 1 seems about right, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked really hard at that horse, but I was like, I just can't take one that is coming off over 180 days and hasn't won in so long. But if you want those angles, this is the jockey that he reaches out to when he's live, like you said, and he's mm -hmm. being protected. So a little bit sneaky there, but I think we just have to be much the best to beat both of the two that we mentioned. But I'll move on. We're now going on the turf course, a mile and an eighth, made in special weights, New York bred, and... There's some first-time starters in here that just seem extremely live, and I would be very surprised if either of them doesn't show up. But we're both using at least a couple with experience as well. Yeah, the first-time starters are interesting in here because you don't see usually see first-time starters going nine furlongs off the bat, but it is on the turf. So, you know, the Pletcher horse has got Pratt, but I went, went ahead with, went with the number 10 horse Olympic Dreams for Clement Rosario. The pedigree is okay, but I don't know. I kind of trust Clement in this situation. The Clement's other horse, the five-horse topic changer, he ran an okay second, but he was in for the tag first out. He lost by seven links on the turf which is a lot for a turf race. So I kept coming back to the first time starters. I don't really have a strong opinion in here. So I just went ahead and went with Olympic dreams. Seems pretty formidable on debut. If he can get the nine furlongs and usually when horse run nine furlongs on debut that I don't know how much early speed either one of them is going to have. But like you said, the ones that have ran are just okay. Right. And with the 10 too, I do feel more confident in the distance abilities since there is some uh, pedigree on the female side of the family that relates to Drosselmeyer who wanted to run mm -hmm. all day, albeit on the dirt, but still the distance ability is there in the bloodlines. And the only other one that I was going to include is Silent Runner. This horse's second time on the turf was in for the tag last time, but I feel like it's kind of a confident sneaky move to then protect this time. And the figures do fit with a group like this as well. 
Yeah, I had – Bond's also a pretty good trainer, off second off the layoff. So, you know, going mile and an eighth, second off the bench should be good for him. I looked at the nine Conquest. I know Nyquist babies aren't great – or Nyquist prodigy are, prodigy are not good on the turf. But he has speed. I don't know if none of these other horses have any early speed. I looked at Conquest number nine as a long shot that can maybe take him – Take him pretty far. I don't know. He's only ran on the dirt twice and didn't show much. He did speed and fade both times for the most part. It's just a long shot that I think maybe can give you a thrill. Yeah, and if there's any place to take a horse that's going to get loose on the lead, it's in these New York turf races. Yeah, 100%. And like I said, the two first-time stars, you know how much early speed they're going to have to begin with. Right, right. Moving on to another claiming race, $25,000 tag, three-year-olds and up. Now we're sprinting on the dirt. This one seems like a completely wide open race for the most part to me. You have a horse like Jake Rocks who never wants to win, but this is a low level for him and he's getting Rosario and this is, I think, the lowest level that he's ever been against. And then you have other horses that just have lived at this level for quite some time. And I know that we're both using a couple of different horses in here. Yeah, Jake Rocks is one for 32 but it does seem like he's a better sprinter uh, it's this is a very this race confused me badly i mean if you look at take a look at the one horse who's coming hasn't run since saratoga but he was running against allowance company now he shows up here about 10 months off the layoff and he's running for a tag first time out there i don't know the protection rule i think he could be protected in this race i don't know if you can be protecting addition claimers but they're putting him in for the tag i don't really know if that's a sign of confidence with the one horse Granted, he did face better horses, but like you said, when horses like Jake Rocks are the favorite, it's kind of a wide open race to me. Agree completely. And the Nota Barn, it seems like they're about to be insanely hot and then they kind of trickle off a little bit and then they'll kind of get back into it. And then who knows with them. But I know that we're both kind of interested in Nature Boy in here as well. And he does have some really speed. Yeah, anytime these races, I, I think these cheaper races in New York, this um, meet have been bombs away in these races. They produce very random results. And like you said, this horse does have speed. His first two races were awful. And then he gets on the lead in his, in his um, third start and he wires them. So, yeah, no, I, if you this would be the spread race for me. If you can use as many horses as you possibly can, this would be the race to spread. I agree with you there. And then – not a spread race at all in the next one. This seems pretty cut and dry. An allowance race for New York Breads. Now we're going to mile and 16th on the dirt. And I mean, I just don't really see how you get around price discipline in here. No, I think Chad running that horse a mile on debut was kind of telling that he wants distance and he got bet off the board that day and won impressively against the horse in Curlin's Wisdom, who's had his chances, but he is a pretty good, he is a pretty good solid horse in the high 70s figure wise. Now he's stretching him out to a mile and a 16th. He's got a good outside draw. Chad Brown's on fire at the meet. He's over 32%. He's good off a win. I just he, I don't like taking horses off maiden wins usually, but if you look through this field, I mean, there's horses like Montebello. But, I mean, what kind of running has he ever really done in his career outside? Like he did was okay as a two-year-old, but I don't know. His return race, he kind of lost all his speed and – I just I hate picking horses like this second off a maiden win, but price discipline does look tough. Right. And then it's like if you don't take him, where else do you really go in here? And I feel like if I didn't take him, I would have to be spreading and I'd rather just take the short price single and move on. And I feel like something would really have to go wrong for him or we'd have to significantly regress for him to not get the job done in this spot. Yeah, I will say the number two horse thrill of it. He's kind of interesting to me, second off the layoff. He has speed from the rail. I don't know. He didn't really he had a weird trip last time out off the layoff. I think that is the other horse in this race that if he can show some speed, could get brave on the front end. But I mean, like you said, I mean, price discipline stretching out. I don't think he's going to be too far off the pace in this um, mile and 16th race. Right. Right. And next race, we have allowance horses. You have some drop downs from stakes company in here. We're going a mile and three eighths on the turf, kind of a funky distance, not really those mile and a quarter races. And I feel like you need a horse that has some capability already proving that they can go long on the turf course. And that's why I went to Easter as my top pick in here, this one dropping from the grade one man of war. And I like that he showed some early interest in there because there was really none. And that's kind of why Gufo and Ubeer, even though he didn't break, were done absolutely no favors in that spot. 
Pratt stays. I mean, he's going to be a short price, but I noticed that you took the 10 Conquer the World on top. Are you just thinking toss the last out because of the turf course being in yielding condition? Yeah, his maiden win was actually really good at Aqueduct as a three-year-old. And I don't know what – the race, his first race off the layoff at Aqueduct this year in April was actually pretty good because he wants to go farther. He was the only horse in that race that made up ground. I have no idea what happened last time out. But he has come back to work twice. He gets Saez right back. So I don't know. I don't know if it's an equipment issue, the yielding turf. I, I, I'm going to guess it was the yielding turf because he was like way out of the race the entire race. He never made any interest in the race. And I thought this was actually a pretty interesting horse getting back to a marathon distance also. His maiden win came at a mile and three sixteenths, a mile and three eighths. And like you said, Easter is going to be a short price because everybody's going to see that strong figure against Highland Chief who came back to run a respectable race in the um, Manhattan. But – I don't know. I, there is one interesting horse in this race, I thought. I thought QF75 was pretty interesting, the two horse, because he kind of ran off going nine furlongs last time out. And now he's going a little farther. So I don't know if they're going to – I mean, obviously he's going to be the speed of the race. I don't know if he's going to be a runoff again. But like you said, in these New York turf races, especially on the inner turf, I think QF75 is probably a use as well because he could get, he is probably going to get loose on the lead in here. Right. I did want to definitely include because I saw that speed angle too. And you never know, he could just go out to the front end and they could stack and pack behind him and he could wire the field with something left. The other Pletcher horse in here, I don't love taking horses coming to the U.S. for the first time, but I, it was a little interesting. The first time Gelding, first time Lasix, Johnny Velasquez is riding. And I wanted to also include just because I don't want this horse to end up being the reason why I'm not hitting this pick six. Yeah, this horse was entered like a week or two ago, going like a mile and a sixteenth, and they scratched they scratched him because we did break his maiden going a mile and a quarter on um, synthetic, so they scratch him to run in the farther distance race. So that's got to be a little interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this horse. When I think of Pletcher, I don't really think of first time U.S. grass horses, but no, I definitely, if you're going to use some other horses in here, I definitely think he would probably be a use. It's just, I, I don't know what to expect from this horse. I didn't, I don't know how good his maiden figure stacks up against these. Right. I just like that he had already gone a little bit farther than some yeah. of the that were trying the distance for the first time, but it's kind of a guess in that situation. And then in the last race, I know that you're singling and pretty confident with the drop down for Clement with Miss Sugar Hill. I wanted to use one more horse that is also dropping on the turf. She has faced claimers before on the dirt, but that's mostly harmless. I think that this is just her preferred surface. And this is the, uh, the probably the softest group that she has been able to face with the exception of Miss Sugar Hill. So I am using both in here, but I don't blame anyone for just taking the uh, Flavian Pratt, Christoph Clement drop down. Yeah. The mostly harmless, the last race she ran in was wired. So she really didn't have a chance, but the horse that came back Frosted Oats won on Sunday in a good maiden race. She's definitely coming out of a pretty good race. I found a stat on the Clement horse. He is four for seven in the last five years on the turf, maiden special to maiden claiming route to sprint. It's usually sprint to route. So he's been very good with these drop downs, cutting back from um, route races to sprint races. And yeah, she's going to be a short price, but. I mean, if you look around this field, there's not really much place, many places to go. The nine horse Jazz Time Girl had two good races as a two year old, but her form this year, her comeback race was just so bad. So I don't, she's hard to trust, and she's like, you know, had a little layoff. But yeah, no, the eight horse is definitely a horse if you wanted to use another one in here that mostly harmless you could use. She, like I said, she comes out of a live race, but. At the end of the day, depending on your budget, I think Miss Sugar Hill would probably be an A for most people in here. I agree. And this is a spot where, look, I'd love to look for a bit of a price, but even my George Weaver on the turf angle that worked so well for me on Sunday, when mm -hmm. he reaches out to Kendrick, I feel like those horses aren't quite as live. And Kendrick, while a great rider and a very aggressive rider, mm -hmm. the start of last week, and the stat may still be true, he was one for 72 on the Belmont turf course. And that's enough to fade in pretty much all situations going through the rest of the meet for me. Yeah, that's interesting. I actually didn't know that. I did not know he was that you know having that poor of a meet on the turf. That horse did get Pratt first time out, but I don't know if Pratt didn't have him out in that race or just you know he was just riding the ride or if it, you know he was five to one on she was five to one on debut, so she did take a little money. Like and like you said, Weaver had that big win on Sunday. He's a very he's a very hot and cold guy, but I feel like every you know he's got that positive ROI at Saratoga. So this is the time of year he kind of he kind of gets going. Right.
All right. Well, that pretty much sums it up. We agree in quite a few spaces. I feel like we're kind of just adding a couple different horses in most spots, but mm -hmm. I feel like we see this sequence very similarly. It seems very approachable. And like you said, it's either going to make perfect sense or it's going to be a total uh, long shot parade coming up yeah. on Thursday. So <laughs> I would be very surprised if a lot of these horses that make sense don't end up performing okay, though. Yeah, and there was one other horse real quick. We didn't mention the eighth race, the Chad Brown horse on the rail, Balthus. I mean, he he did win his last race by six lengths. So, you know, if the people out there, if you want to use another horse in that race, I think the one horse in the eighth race, Balthus. But, yeah, like you said, I th I always say it's going to be chalky because these sequences sometimes look chalky and then they're opposite. But I do think there are some formidable favorites in this sequence that you can play around and try to make some money off of. Absolutely. Well, thank you for taking the time to chat about the sequence with me. Are you going to have your Paddock Prince picks on the uh, Horse Racing Nation website for the day? They will be up tomorrow for Thursday. Yeah, they, everything will be up and ready to go. All right. Awesome. Well, people can find all of that at picks.horseracingnation.com and good luck on the pick six. Thank you, you too. Thanks for having me.